Here's a really quick tutorial to procedurally split any mesh along its UV seams, which will allow us to work in the UV space. This will be really useful in the cloth stitching toolbox I am currently making. For example, if we take an icosphere and in the geometry node tab set the position of the vertices to the UV map, it will not at all look like its UV unwrapped version, which is right here. And this is because all the vertices that are duplicated in the UV unwrap version are still stitched together in our mesh data. One way to only split the edges at the boundary of our UV map would be to capture the original position of our mesh, then split all the edges before setting the position to the UV space, then doing a merge by distance and moving everything back to its original position. That way, here we have 63 vertices instead of the original 42, which is less than the 240 we get if we split all the edges, and if you count everything, it is exactly the amount of vertices we have in our UV unwrapped version. But this is very time consuming on big meshes, because the merge by distance and moving everything twice will be really computationally expensive. So let's do this more cleanly. I'm going to create a new geometry node setup and call it Split UV Island. Now to compute this, we need to keep in mind that the UV data is stored on the face corners. So for each edge, we are going to compare the values on either side of the edge. And if the two values are different, that means we need to split this edge only. And there are a bunch of nodes we can use to do this very efficiently. First, obviously, let's set up our split edge node, and we can also add our set position to fetch our UV map, which you can rename UV map. For the default attribute, we can put the default UV map name, which is just UV map. Now we are going to allow to switch between this unwrapped and the original version, so you can use this to debug any node group. And I am just renaming the boolean to unwrap. Now to select the edges we want to split, we first need to capture the index of all the edges. So at the capture attribute node, set to integer and edge. And here we can plug the index. Now for each edge, we have four face corners. And we need to compare this one with this one and those two together. And if either those two are different or those two, we need to split this edge. So to get the corners, we can use the corners of edge node. We are going to plug this capture attribute in the edge index. And here, if we preview the total attribute, we can right away see that this node can only output two different values for each edge. It will originally only check those two values, but if we use the offset corner in face node, it can also check the two other values. So here, to get all the four values, we are going to duplicate this node and first get the second one, and we can offset the index of the first one by one. So this will give us the two top values. And for the two bottom ones, we can sh Ctrl Shift D duplicate everything. And we just need to invert those two indexes. Now to get the value of the UV map of those four face corners, we need to sample the index of everything from our geometry data with this index and the value we want to sample is a vector which is located on the face corners and we are going to sample our UV map just like this. Now we can duplicate this four times and with a bit of cleanup we can plug all the corner indexes like this and now we will be able to visualize all four different corner values for each edge. And now we are going to compare those two values together and those two values together with a not equal 
compare operation like this and we can also put the epsilon value as a new input which might be useful to change the threshold value then as explained in the beginning we are going to compare with an or boolean math operation so we can split everything if either of those two values are different and now we can plug this into our split edge node Now if we check our geometry data, we are back to our 63 vertices, just like with the previous method which was really expensive, but if we test this with a really big mesh, it will be really really efficient compared to the other method. And as you can see, it works really well, and this will always work even if we do really weird stuff to our UV map. And this is it for this really quick tutorial for this handy node group, which will be available as usual on my Gumroad. Thank you for watching, I hope this will be useful for you, and see you next time.